Hello, this is Ray Marquis, Senior Application Engineer at Valen Corporation. This is a very short presentation about what is IO Link and why it's useful. There's a wealth of information on the internet about IO Link and the benefits of using it. This is not that detailed, it's just a quick overview, and then I'll be following this video with other videos showing how to use IO Link with Omron's N series of PLCs and IO Link units. So, what is IO Link? Basically, it's a bi directional point to point communication network. That means that it's a communication network that goes from the device to a master and the master to the device. It's traditionally thought of to be used for sensors, such as inductive sensors or photo sensors, but it can also be used for some light curtains that are equipped with an IO link interface. Uh, some signal towers have it, motor starters, relays, etc. It's a standardized connection for the devices. So either your device is going to have three or four wires and it will connect to three or four connection points on the IO link master. Whether it's a light curtain, a signal tower, or a sensor, it's going to have either the three or the four wires. The devices will connect to the IO link master and then the IO link master will connect to the upstream or, or main controller. You might think this sounds just like wiring a sensor to an input module, for instance, and then getting that information up to the master over the field bus. However, the difference is that once you connect to the sensor using IO link, you get more than just the digital IO info. And we'll see that in some subsequent videos. Here's a sample topography of what you can get with IO link. Uh, if you think about it, you're going to be collecting information from your factory into a cloud, like a remote location or a, a corporate headquarters or something. And then at the, at the manufacturing site, you've got access to your main controller. That's the next level here. I'll, I'll move my mouse up to it. So you have access to this main controller and in Omron's case, it could be through a SCADA interface with an Omron driver, or if you have the PLC equipped with the database interface, then it'll be directly communicating to a database and so on. Downstream of that controller, we have a field bus. In this case, it's EtherCAT. The EtherCAT network is connecting to some IO link masters, either on a bus coupler, which could also have standard IO units on it, or to a dedicated IO link master. In this case, it's an Omron one that has connectors on it. So you just screw your sensors or light curtain or whatever into it. And that way you're getting this information from these sensors in this case, all the way up through the field bus to the factory. And that information is not just the input status, whether the input's on or off. It's also information about, in the case of a photoelectric sensor, for instance, it's information about the incident light level received. Um, with inductive sensors, it could be information about the percentage of sensing distance that you've seen and so on. So you get that information in addition to having the normal function of your sensor or your light curtain or whatever. So why do you want to use IO Link? For one, it can simplify the machine build. When you're building your machines, you might have sensors or products from different vendors with their own specific wiring diagrams unique to them or whatever. Uh, if you're using IO Link, all of those devices that are IO Link enabled will connect in the same fashion as all the other devices. So you have either three or four wires, and there are three or four connection points on the IO Link unit. And if you have a three wire IO link device, you'll connect it to the same three wires as every other three wire IO link device. If you have a four wire IO link device, you'll connect it to the same four wires or four connection points as every other IO link device. The other way it simplifies the machine build is that when you have your project built already and you've got the settings for each device, once you connect them and power up, the IO link master can download the parameters or the settings for the IO link device. You don't have to go back out and do each device manually. So if you have sensors where you're tweaking the settings and you've got them set correctly, finally, and then you go to build a new machine, you don't have to go back and do all those settings over. They'll just be downloaded to the, to the IO link master and then through the master to the slaves or the devices. You can simplify troubleshooting as well because you get more information from your sensors than you do with a standard digital IO interface. Uh, you can get incident levels for the photo sensors. You can see how your feedback is from your inductive sensors and so on. So they'll simplify troubleshooting that way. In addition, there are multiple status bits that tell you whether the sensor is wired correctly. If it's got a short circuit, 
if it's the wrong sensor because you've changed, like had a broken photo sensor and you put in the wrong model, it'll tell you that you've got the wrong model in there. It's also good for predictive maintenance because you get a verification of the connected device. Just like I said, in case of replacement, you can uh, make sure that you put the right part in. It's got the automatic parameter download that once you replace a part, if you put the correct one in, it'll download the, param the parameters to it. The standardized wiring, which I mentioned, that helps with uh, either the three wire IO link device or the four wire IO link device. And in many cases, performance and monitoring info is available like the incident light level from, from photo sensors. You get better diagnostics and predictive maintenance features with all of those things above, and you can eliminate the switch and potentiometer operation on the sensors. So if you have a sensor that has a screw pot on it or a device with a screw pot that can be adjusted with a screwdriver, it, there's a setting in most of these IO-Link devices where you can say, I want to ignore that potentiometer and only use the settings that are sent from the controller. So it keeps uh, operators from going out and tweaking on those and messing things up. What are the limitations of IO-Link? If you have high-speed applications where most discrete sensors in IO-Link have an update time of 2.3 milliseconds or greater. So if you can't live with that update time, then you're going to have to go with a standard IO device. If you have a large amount of data that needs to be transferred from the device to the controller, IO-Link is a bad option for that because we're limited to 32 bytes. And then when you have uh, smaller machines with low IO counts on a simple standalone uh, PLC, like a, a brick PLC, then IO-Link is probably not a great option for that. That's it. I know that was quick, but we're just hitting the highlights of IO-Link. I hope you found this video helpful. Please look for subsequent videos that show how to use IO-Link devices with Omron N-Series PLCs and their IO-Link Masters.